a mystery. Rocky and Ben were sitting on the grass in Wellington Square. It was Saturday morning and everyone was busy doing something. Everyone that was, except Rocky and Ben. They were bored. Let's play something, said Ben. Rocky thought for a moment. We could be detectives, he said. What do detectives do? asked Ben. Detectives find a mystery and solve it, said Rocky, getting up. Come on, Ben. Let's find a mystery and solve it. Ben wasn't very sure what what they were supposed to do, but he followed Rocky across the park. The boys saw Fred standing next to one of his flower beds. They went over and told him what they were doing. Well, said Fred, I have a mystery you can solve. Just look there. Fred pointed to a patch of flowers. There were plenty of stalks and leaves, but the heads of the flowers are missing. Find out who's been stealing my flowers, said Fred. It's a mystery to me. Rocky was not very interested in Fred's mystery. He was looking for something much more exciting and dangerous. Finding someone who took a few flowers from the park wasn't his idea of a good mystery. The boys wandered out of the park. They saw Mr Keeping coming out of his house. He seemed quite worried and was looking up and down the street as if he was searching for someone. Rocky asked him if he had a mystery they could solve. Yes, I have, said Mr Keeping. Could you find out where Brian is? Brian, said Ben. Who is Brian? Wait here, said Mr Keeping. He went inside his house and returned quickly with a large photograph of a chimp. This is Brian, he said, holding out the photograph for the boys to look at. He's a chimp. I've been looking after him for a friend, but now he's run away. This was more like it. Catching an escaped chimp was more exciting than looking for someone who stole flowers. We must look carefully at the photograph, said Rocky, so we will recognise Brian when we see him. All good detectives do that. Ben was about to say that he didn't think they would have any difficulty in recognising a chimpanzee wandering about Wellington Square when they heard shouting coming from next door. My gold necklace is missing! My gold necklace is missing! Mrs Valentine, Mr Keeping's rich neighbour, ran out of the house shouting at the top of her voice. Now here's a real mystery, said Rocky. Just the sort of mystery detectives have to solve. Rocky went over to Mrs Valentine. We'll find your necklace for you, he said. We're good at solving mysteries. Ben looked doubtful, and so did Mrs Valentine. But she took the boys into her house to show them where she had kept the necklace. On the table was a jewellery box. Rocky and Ben looked inside. There were some rings and a bracelet, but no gold necklace. It was worth a lot of money, said Mrs Valentine. I just don't know who could have taken it. Although Rocky said they were good at solving mysteries, he really didn't know what to do next. Detectives on television dusty for fingerprints, but Rocky and Ben had no idea how to do that. I suppose we should look for clues, he said to Ben. What sort of clues, asked Ben. Just clues, said Rocky, who was getting cross with Ben for not playing the game properly. Just at that moment there was a noise upstairs. That must be the burglar, said Rocky. He's still in the house. We'll catch him for you. Mrs Valentine wasn't sure that that was a good idea. I think we'd better let the police deal with this, she said. The burglar may be dangerous. You might get hurt. Now just wait here until I call them. She hurried into the hall to dial 999. This is our mystery, said Rocky to Ben. We'll catch the burglar and hand him over to the police. Ben looked worried. Perhaps we'd better do what Mrs Valentine said. If you're too scared, I'll go by myself, said Rocky, heading for the stairs. Ben didn't want Rocky to think that he was a coward so he followed him. The boys crept upstairs. They reached the top of the stairs and looked round. All the doors were closed. Suddenly they heard another noise. That's where he is, said Ben, pointing to a room on the left. He's inside that room. Shh, said Rocky. We must be very quiet so that we can take him by surprise. Ben and Rocky looked at each other nervously. Rocky was as scared as Ben. Now they were so near to the burglar. Rocky nodded at Ben and both boys rushed up to the door and flung it open. There, jumping on the bed, was a big chimp wearing a shiny gold necklace. That must be Brian, said Rocky. And Brian is the burglar, said Ben. We must catch him, said Rocky. And he and Ben rushed over to the bed. But Brian was too quick and as Ben and Rocky tried to grab him, the chimp darted off the bed and jumped out of the window. Rocky and Ben looked out and saw him scampering off down the garden, still wearing ne the necklace. Look out!
shouted Rocky. Brian's getting away! Mr Keeping saw Brian, then he saw the necklace. I might have known it, he said, as he began to chase Jim. Brian is the burglar. This is one of his clever tricks. Mr Keeping was just about to run after Brian when the chimps spotted a bicycle. By this time, Rocky Bent and Mrs Valentine had run out of the house. Stop him! shouted Mr Keeping. Riding a bike is one of his tricks. Mrs Valentine looked as if she was about to faint. He mustn't get away! she shouted. He's still wearing my necklace and that's my bike! Rocky and Ben dashed out of the gate and up the street after Brian, who was wobbling dangerously on the bike. We'll catch him! they cried. By this time, quite a few people had stopped and were staring at the chimpanzee as he made his way unsteadily around the square. His fet feet kept slipping <laughs> off the pedals as his legs were too short to reach them properly. But the boys still couldn't catch him. At last, it wasn't Rocky and Ben who stopped Brian, but the fence at the edge of the park. The chimp crashed into it, falling off head first into one of Fred's flower beds. The bike was quite a mess. Its front wheel bent and buckled and spinning wildly. Brian didn't look any the worse for his experience. In fact, he looked quite delighted as he stared at all the flowers. Rocky and Ben were puzzled, but Mr Keeping knew why Brian was so happy. The chimp loved flowers. They were his favourite food, and he lost no time in grabbing a handful of Fred's beautiful blooms and stuffing them into his mouth. If Brian was delighted, Fred certainly wasn't. He had come rushing out of his shed when he heard the crash, and he went purple in the face. He was so angry. He ran over to Brian, waving his arms about and shouting for him to stop. Brian jumped up, grabbed some more flowers and leapt onto Fred's shed. Quite a crowd had gathered and everyone watched as Brian danced around on the shed, eating the flowers. How can we get him down? asked Rocky. I don't care how you get him down, said Fred. Just get him off of my shed. And get my necklace, cried Mrs Valentine. Mr Keeping had an idea. Get a banana, Rocky. He loves bananas as much as flowers. Rocky ran off to the corner shop. When he returned, he was carrying a large bunch of bright yellow bananas. As soon as Brian saw them, he jumped down from the shed. He didn't seem to mind when Mr Keeping took the gold necklace away and put a chain around his neck. He was too busy eating the bananas. Ben picked up the bike and wheeled it back to Mrs Valentine's house. He made a lot of funny noises, but Mrs Valentine didn't seem to mind. She was so pleased to get her necklace back. I'll call the police and tell them not to come, she said. The mystery has been solved. Rocky and Ben were very pleased with themselves. They had solved the mystery of the stolen flowers and the mystery of the missing necklace all in one go. Not bad for their first day as detectives.